Hey you guys, it's John Spencer Ellis and on the other half of the screen is my good friend Tom Terwilliger and as Kelly Calabrese and I said, it's just fun to say that name. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult, but fun. <laughs> yes. So um, uh, Tom and I have known each other for a few years. Um, he's an amazing person who uh, I admire a lot and he has some really cool stuff and I, what I like about what you do, Tom, is that you... Uh, have a very different approach to fitness and the business of fitness. Uh, for one, you're a former Mr. America. Not too many people can ever, ever say that. Um, <laughs> uh, you've uh, appeared on um, uh, Tony Robbins' infomercial. You've shared the stage with uh, T. Har Becker, a New York's number one best-selling author of uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. You yourself uh, have an Amazon number one bestseller, which is also crazy tough to do, but you did that. The Seven Rules of Achievement, and uh, and you also help people grow their fitness business. And you are going to be one of our featured uh, presenters at Fitness Fortunes Live in Dallas, Texas. And uh, I want to give people a sample of all your goodness here. And uh, your book is awesome, uh, Seven Rules of Achievement, but it applies to fitness professionals. So that's what we'll, let's talk about. Fundamentally, what are the seven rules of achievement, and how do fitness pros use them to become more successful? Absolutely. And first off, I want to let you know that uh, I am thrilled to have been asked to be part of Fitness Fortunes Live because it's just, it's going to be such a unique, I mean, I get a chance to speak at a lot of events and I'm invited to speak to a, a, a lot of fitness audiences and a lot of fitness leaders. But this is going to be so unique and so different that it's really very exciting for me, to be quite honest with you. Uh, we're it's pumped too. I, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's not about, you know, I mean, although, you know, it will relate to in many respects how to really create the body you want, help others do the same thing. Uh, it's not about that, and it's about something else. It's about that long-term vision, that long-term goal. Someone mentioned to me yesterday during an interview that their objective, their goal is to build a fitness empire. And really, John, this is what you've done, and this is what you're now saying, hey, I'm at the level now, I want to share this with others. You and Kelly have done it. You want to share it with others. You've invited people like myself who have done it as well. And now we want to have that opportunity to share it with those people who are really, hey, they're passionate about fitness. They're passionate about being professionals and being leaders in the community and want to take that to the next level so they can serve themselves, but also so they can serve more people. So I'm really, really excited about that. Well, cool. And I'm excited to share you know, the seven rules and how they apply for sure. Well, let's, let's jump right into it. I mean, well, first of all, I mean, you could have had 100 rules and there may be 100, but why, why seven? Well, seven truly, I mean, when I, when I started to evaluate and uh, where the rules came from and how they apply, you know, when I started to look at my own life in terms of how I applied certain principles, strategies, techniques, I now call them rules, in terms of coming from my background, which certainly no one would have suspected it would have led to any level of success for that matter. I, I used to ride with an outlaw biker gang in New York, and there was a lot of going in the wrong direction happening. And to have to, to make that 180, I had to apply some real principles, some real rules of success. And so as I evaluated, well, what did I do? How did I do that? Because at the time, it was just sort of like, let's do it. And I started reading as much as possible, listening as much as possible. I had mentors up the gazoo, Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, Maxwell Maltz, you name it. I was reading and listening to as much as possible and applying the principles that they were bringing to me, that they had gotten from others as well, like Orson Sweat Martin, who goes way back, way, way back. So I started to look at that later on when I wanted to begin really using the right tools, using those principles, using those rules to not only help myself, but to help others, to help clients. Because for years I had uh, several athletic clubs in New York, here in Denver, Colorado, and what I began to notice was the difference between those people who really get results and those people who don't get results has to do with these particular seven rules. And they happen to be the exact same seven rules that I applied to create the success or to make that 180 degree turn that I did back when and then used it ever since. So really the seven is the exact number that I've at least come up with in terms of what those rules are. But seven is also a magical number as we know, right? Seven is something about the number seven universally, energetically, that's a really positive number for people. And, and so it applied perfectly. In fact, I was thrilled when I realized it was actually seven rules <laughs> to achieving what you want in life. So, what, so let's start, like, you know, let's, let's do, uh, you know, two to three minutes on each rule. 
Say what it is and how does that apply to a fitness pro who wants to get more out of their life and their business? Well, let me do this, John. Since there are seven, and I'm going to be talking a lot about these things, at the, uh, all seven at the, at the uh, event itself, at the live event. Let's do this. Uh, what I'd like to do is kind of talk about the, the top three. Okay. And the top three are so important that without them, the others are all important as well. But those top three are critical, particularly with what I'm going to be talking about at the event, which is time and efficiency fortunes. If you're not efficient with your time, which is, quite honestly, uh, our, our most precious commodity, my God, I mean, you and I both struggle even today with everything we've got going on to say, let's set aside some time. Let's set aside 20 minutes to be able to share some things with our viewers here. And it's, and it's difficult unless you're really managing that time. So the, the rules that, that I want to talk about today apply specifically to that. And the first rule, period, is about identifying what you want. Now, I know that's going to sound like, you know, the three most dangerous words in the English language, which is, I already know that. <laughs> it's actually four the way I say it. I know that. There are three words, right? <laughs> but to identify what you want is a little trickier than most people really realize. Most people, and fitness professionals certainly, you know, in, in the area of building a business, will kind of know what they want or sort of know what they want or have some ambiguous idea of what they want. They want to be successful. They want money. They want a good relationship. They want to have a healthy body that represents what they do. And all those things can, be, can you know, become goals and ideas of what they're after in many respects. But if they're a little bit ambiguous, and let's face it, being rich is ambiguous. Now, how, how, what do I mean by that? And I know you know this, John, because you got very specific somewhere along the way. You identified exactly what you wanted to create. You knew the type of home that you wanted. You knew the type of car you wanted to drive. You knew the lifestyle that you wanted to have and what it was going to take to be able to do that. Someone who doesn't identify that they want to have a net worth of $600,000, or two million dollars, or ten million dollars, or like uh, you know, so a, a very dear friend of mine has. He has a specific goal to own, buy, and own the New York Jets someday. Right. That's his goal. Now we know he's going to have to have some serious abundance to make that happen, <laughs> and he's gotten very specific about what that is. So for all fitness professionals, if you're going to really be efficient with your time, you've got to specifically know exactly what you want. Otherwise, what happens is you wind up being a great multitasker and getting a lot of stuff done, but it doesn't necessarily amount to moving towards what the ultimate goal and objective is. And then you find yourself six months, a year, two years, five years later, doing the same shit, excuse the expression. That's all good. <laughs> putting out fires, which may be good, but not really evolving, not really moving forward. So that is the first thing. That is a critical component. The what. In fact, uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, speakers once said that, you know, most people never get what they want because they don't know what they want. And that's true for fitness professionals. And, you know, and I, I, I want to interject something just real quick. I know this can seem elementary sometimes, but if, it's like, you know, you and I both do martial arts. We know that we always have to go back to the foundations. It's the stances. It's the basic kick. It's the basic punch. And, like, if you've done any sport, anything like that, gymnastics, whatever, there's always foundation. And you have to go back to it before you go out and do the other things. And people often miss this step because they get ideas and they go, oh, I see this. And, and I, you know, I say, warning, yes. warning, stay away from bright, shiny objects <laughs> until, until you grasp the foundation, the fundamentals. And if you're not clear where you're going, you're like this, you're all over the place. Yeah. And, and so <clears throat> what specifically can someone do to narrow down the distractions? Well, again, it goes back to really getting clear on what they want. If you want to open a studio, if you want the first studio to open within the next six months or year for you, and ultimately the goal is to have several of those and to make them reproducible, the bigger picture, you might say. The bigger picture always plays a role. And sometimes it can feel daunting. It can feel really overwhelming for a lot of people. Fitness professionals, you know, we're coming up. We've got, we don't make a ton of money out of the shoot. You know, we struggle a little bit at first. We're building clientele. We're doing whatever we're doing. And it can be difficult, be challenging. So to really look at the big picture in terms of, wow, creating abundance, like what you've done, John, and what others have done, what Kelly have done, has done in the fitness community in terms of that big picture, it can be really overwhelming. But having the big picture, the ultimate goal, 
that ultimately I don't just want a studio because a studio will give you a job. That's all it's going to give you. In fact, it's going to be twice as hard as the job you're doing right now. You're going to be doing 10 jobs in one. But if your ultimate goal is to have a reproducible model where you can do hundreds of these perhaps throughout the country and then somebody buys you out for a hefty $50 million, that's a nice lofty goal, but it's something beyond what most people think about. But it is nice to have that vision, that dream. Then the next step is to chunk it down, break it down into those smaller ones. You want your first studio open, operating, and making money in the next six months or so? Then you got to get really clear on exactly what that looks like and the resources that it's going to take along the way to make that happen. Everything you do on a daily basis then should be based on making that goal happen. Anything that's not based on making that goal happen is a distraction and something that takes away your precious time. I had a great example. Uh, there's a, there's a, uh, a company here in Colorado that is competing in the energy drink market. It's called GoFast. I don't know if you're familiar with GoFast. I'm not in that particular one. Jo GoFast is really starting to dominate this region and starting to spread rapidly. And I had an opportunity to, to approach the president of GoFast a, a few years ago with an energy gum project that I was working on. It was really great. We had this great patent. But anyway, sidebar. We approached him with it, and we thought, ideal, perfect, absolutely right in line with what they're doing. It's an energy gum. It couldn't be better. It's perfect. It goes with the drink. But they were so focused on what they were doing on their market, on specifically building their brand around that energy drink, that they turned it down. We thought it would. Now, ultimately, this is four or five years later, they ultimately picked up the product and they're running with it. But then they were so focused that even this great idea, this something like, oh, most people would say, holy crap, you've got a patent for this centrifuge infused gum, and you've also been able to mask all those herbs that are bitter and you couldn't, even, couldn't possibly eat it. Let's run with it, man. No, they said, we got to stay focused. We have a goal. We have an objective. And that's exactly what they did. And i got to be honest with you. It was, it was an interesting lesson even for me because I was puzzled at first. I've seen so that happen point. too. I've seen that happen too with different companies. And I'm thinking, gosh, it seems like they're really missing out. But they're so laser right. focused. But then you fast forward two, three, four years and they skyrocketed way ahead of everybody because Absolutely. they didn't have the distractions. And, and you know, I always talk about the mistakes I've made and the list is long. And that is, and that is probably one of the things that uh, I, the mistakes I made is, you know, I do have a, a, a wide reach of things that I do, but I've, I had to really learn to say no to a lot of things. Mm. Learn how, learn a lot of different ways to do what you do well, but don't learn a lot of things and then apply it in a hundred different directions at once because yeah. you're going to go nowhere fast. Absolutely, because you know what? You can have the greatest dreams, you can have the greatest goals, but the execution is the critical component. Knowing what you want is the first step. Being able to execute on that is critical. And if you've got too many things going on, if you're moving, you know, we've all heard this example, and I love to use it. You know, success in whatever area we want success to be for us, whatever it's represented by in our life, is like moving this giant concrete ball up a hill. I mean, it's massive. It's huge. And we're pushing this thing up the hill and we're starting to get some momentum and we're starting to get some energy behind it. And we're almost there, perhaps. Maybe we don't even know how close we are, but we're getting close. Then all of a sudden, a little distraction comes in. It's not much. It's just like, you know what? I was thinking about opening a studio too. How would you like to partner on that? Even though it's not part of your business plan, it's not part of your focus. Oh, that could be a good opportunity to get our second gym open. Now, all of a sudden, some of the energy that, was, that it took to m keep that ball moving up the hill dissipates and now it stays still if you're lucky if you're not so lucky it starts to move backwards and starts to run you right over so you're absolutely right John that is so critical in terms of even though the opportunities are out there you gotta focus on what it is that you want stay focused on that and execute making sure that everything you do during the day is in some way shape or form chipping away towards making that ultimate goal happen I want to add one more thing to your point of clarity and uh, I this was said to me and I thought wow this is really great so you guys take note of all this stuff this is some some good nuggets here speaking on the theme that Tom's talking about with clarity you know not it's not only just about the clarity you want for your business but the clarity you want for your customer so here's what I invite you to do is you know if you've seen the movie Avatar or if you're familiar with an avatar like for uh, forums and blogs and stuff like that, it's basically like a pictorial representation of a person. 
Mm. So what I would like for you to do is in your mind, create an avatar of your ideal customer. And so who, who is this avatar? Are they male or female? What is their age? How do they feel? What kind of car do they drive? What is their median household income? And you know, this is, this is basically, you know, targeting your market or, you know, creating a user profile or, you know, mm -hmm. there's different ways of, of doing it, but if you make it more fun like this and kind of create and mold this perfect kind of person. And not only that, but how do you, how well do you get along with them? How much do you like them? Do you like to hang out with them? Not that you have to, but are they cool enough to where you want to? Because these are the kind of people that you want to be with, spend your time with and build business relationships with. So create this avatar perfect client or customer and you your business as you bring everything into focus will gravitate its programs product servicing and uh, services and offerings to that avatar of your ideal uh, customer T Tom have you heard that before are you familiar with that or absolutely you said it very distinctly though and it be, and, it, and it really brings hones it down it distills it down into how important it is to, to where you put your time. If you're trying to reach, I mean, and this was a lesson I had to learn years ago as a fitness professional and a studio owner. It was sort of like, it's that, it's that big question, you know, do you want to work with this niche or this niche or just everyone? Do you want to have, you know, 60 clients hours a week at $20 a session? Or do you want to do 10 hours a week at $150 a session? It, it, it's, it's a choice that helps you hone down how you're going to put your, how you're going to invest your time and execute on your plan, which is a critical component. That knowing what you want is part of the plan. So yeah, that's a that's a really key one. Understanding who they are. What do they look like? What do they feel? What are their drivers? What are their goals? What are their dreams, visions? What are they missing in their lives that you can help them yeah. fulfill? My phone's ringing here, but we're going to keep rocking. That's okay. <laughs> Someone's calling <laughs> in with a question. I, I love technology, just not when it's combined inappropriately. <laughs> All right, so go, go on to number two. Well, number two is so important because number two is the driver. I just mentioned a moment ago, you know, when you, when you talked about creating that avatar. And for us, we've also got uh, an opportunity to create the avatar of ourselves. And the ad avatar, in terms of really achieving anything, being a hero, you might say, in life, and achieving their goals and objectives, and elevating themselves from where they are, which I know all of us want to do, it, the, the, one of the most critical components, and I said it earlier about your customers, is what drives them? What are their needs in life? What do they want? What do they love? What's the driver behind this goal that they have to get in shape or to be more fit? So I'd ask you this. The most, one of the most important things in terms of the rules of achievement is why do you want it? And, and, and in my personal training business that I did for years, this was a question I would also distill down. Because when you ask someone, what's your goal? What do you want to do? Well, I want to, uh, this year, you know, April's coming up. It's going to be warm. Excuse me. June's coming up. It's going to be warm. I really want to look good in a bathing suit because we're having this family reunion. Okay, great. That's fantastic. I know we can make that happen if that's something you really, truly want to do. But let me ask you this. Why is that important to you? Why? I mean, why? I mean, it's your family, for crying out loud. Why is it important to you to look really good in a bathing suit? They have to pause again now for a moment. Because that's a little less clear. But now what we're doing is we're peeling away, you know, the classic peeling away of the onion. We're peeling away the surface of the, what we think we want and why we want it to get into something deeper, which is the real driver, which is usually based on your values or based on a need for significance or love or acceptance in some way, shape, or form. So you got to get to that driver. You got to find out what that is. If they said to me at that point, well, you know, I just, uh, I, I know that I'll feel better about myself if I, if I look really good in that bathing suit. Awesome. And I'm sure you will. But let me ask you something. Why would, being, why would looking great in a bathing suit make you feel better about yourself and why is that important to you? Just keep peeling away the onion. So for us individually as fitness professionals, you want to do the same thing. You want to get as deep as possible as to why this is important to you. Quite often we're driven by advertising, we're driven by what we think our parents want for us, we're driven by what we think our wives and husbands want for us, or what our kids want from us, or what we think society is sort of expecting from us. They expect us to have a certain type of house, or drive a certain car. We're going to feel a little crappy if, we're not, if we drive up and beat up old car, right? It doesn't feel good. But, so why? But why is that really important to you? 
keep pulling away, peeling away the onion, discover it for yourself because once you get there, you're going to feel some emotion that you'll be able to revisit and revisit. Write it down. Write down clearly what it is. Why do you want this? And then revisit that again and again because what's going to happen, and I know you've experienced this, John, and I know that anyone who's ever set a goal and pursued it that's on this call right now or watching this video right now has run into obstacles. In fact, the greater the goal and the more serious you are, the greater the level of resistance you're going to encounter along the way. And if you're not clear on exactly why you're doing this, the great motivator behind it, just having a nice car or a great home is not going to be motivation enough to keep you moving through those obstacles. It's well, not, the other not thing, Tom, is, you know, sometimes as you ask yourself these questions, you know, why do I want to make X number of dollars? And I'm not saying I want to be rich or whatever. You, you have to be specific. Why do I want to make $250,000 a year as a fitness pro? Uh, why must I put my kids in a better school? Why do I want to move to a better, safer neighborhood? Why do I want to be able to uh, go on extended European vacations? But also maybe why do I want to give back to my church or my synagogue? Or why do I want to... Um, give back to my community or help the local library. You know, it, it, there's a lot of different reasons, and, and it's all unique and highly personal. But yeah. as you're going through these things and you're figuring out why you have to do this, you feel compelled to make these changes. Sometimes you may not like or expect the answers that your subconscious comes up with. And you're like, "Oh my gosh, this this is a little painful." Maybe as I go through this process, but um, that's just growth. Um, and, and what's important is that you acknowledge it, whether it's good or bad, whether you expected it or not, um, whatever emotion is attached to this kind of this unraveling, this unpeeling of layers, and find out why these things are important to you. And you may be surprised and it may be something completely different than you first thought when you started. But the important thing is to have a resolution because if you if you don't have the clarity, which we talked about, and you don't go through these layers, and you don't have the resolution, there's always that um, lack of completion. You know, we always talk about uh, closure. People say, I need closure. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to get uh, too into the uh, psychology part of it, but basically, your brain wants closure. It wants to close that loop. And mm -hmm. so if things are left unattended, unfinished, you always have that kind of that nagging feeling. Well, gosh, I wish I could have been more successful. I wish I could have done this. And I wish my business was more. And I wish I had better clients. And I wish I had the nerve to ask them for 20 more dollars a session. I know I'm worth it. Create a resolution. You have to have completion of that task and of that sensation or it'll, it'll always be kind of running in the background. And, Absolutely. And, you know, like and, you have stuff running in the background of your computer and you just hear it winding up and the hard drive's working really hard. The same <laughs> thing is going on in your mind and that is a huge distraction and obviously it sucks a lot of the energy out of your computer and out of this computer too. You know, it's interesting you mention that because really, you know, uh, is uh, when I talk about time management, what I'm really talking about and what I always related to and what we're going to share a lot in the, for the audience at Fitness Fortunes Live is that it's really more about energy management because as much as our time is important to us as well almost everyone that I know at some point or another has said uh, you know I, I, either I wish I had more time in the day or what they really need is more energy to utilize the time more efficiently and effectively so when you've got this wheel turning in the back of the head with lack of closure in certain areas in your life it's absorbing a tremendous amount of unresolved energy that you could be putting somewhere else. You wonder why you're exhausted? Resolve those issues. We're going to help you do that uh, at Fitness Fortunes Live. Absolutely. Uh, do you have? Uh, well, wait a minute. That's one, two. Is that three? That's two. We kind of we kind of melded some stuff together. I want to make sure we got it. <laughs> we did. We did. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure we covered what we need to talk about. I'm thinking ahead a little bit too as we go here. Um, well, I tell you what, um, we're going to keep this one short and sweet, but uh, two things. Number one, uh, how do they get your book? Because I, I think it's awesome. You can certainly go to Amazon.com and look up Seven Rules of Achievement, or you can go directly to my website at sevenrulesofachievement.com, where I've got a lot of other tools, some great videos, and some blog posts that I think will benefit you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Now, give your best compelling case for why people may be completely off their rocker if they don't join us at Fitness Fortunes Live May 20th through the 22nd in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I mean, and this is something after 25, 30 years in the fitness community, you hear it all the time. Talk is cheap. 
You know it from working with clients, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in your boot camp or in your yoga or your spin classes, it doesn't matter what you do for the most part. We hear from the clients, what's the most frustrating thing you hear from your clients is, oh, you know, I, I tried to eat right this weekend, but I got off track and I, you know, I'm committed now, I'm really committed, or they miss workouts or they don't adhere to the program. You know what they need to do. They've expressed what they need and want to do and are committed to doing, but they're not doing it. Your commitment is to be successful as a fitness professional. Your commitment is not only to yourself, but to your clients as well. And if you want to serve them at the highest possible level, then you have to serve yourself. And to do that, you have to learn from other people. I can tell you my own experience is over the last 10, 20 years or so, I have spent a near fortune myself learning from other people like John, like Tony Robbins, like others that had so much to share that have done it, this is your opportunity to do that. This is your opportunity to stop the talk and stop wondering why you're not as successful as you should be and stop getting pissed off that somebody else is and start learning the techniques, the strategies, and the rules that they've applied to create that level of success in their life and become fitness leaders in the community as well as creating a fortune. So be there. Learn it. Stop wondering why and start learning how. Wow. That was powerful. <laughs> you know, I want to. I had, I, that's I my own lesson, man. I had to learn it the hard way. That is awesome. <laughs> like it almost scares me. It's like so powerful. Um, I want. I want to add one thing here. You know, be, because you, you guys, you know, most of the people who watch this video know the kind of the work that I do, and, and a lot of them are probably familiar with your stuff too. But I definitely want to introduce them to your great work. I think what's important to note in this is that there's definitely a personal development aspect to business success. Now, this is not like a cheerleading personal development kind of event because it's just it's just not. That's not what it is. But I, I hope that you can see that there are definitely correlations with behavior and actions and mindset and motivation and personal strategies for success, time and life and energy management that are integral parts of your overall success because if we just give you strategies, tactics, and techniques, let's say for search engine optimization and creating a cool blog, but you have no interpersonal skills that even give you the ability to make that stuff work, it's mm -hmm. not going to work. So we weave that in to the, the business and the marketing and the, and the you know, publicity training and things like that that go with your fitness business. But um, it's, it's just to show you the correlation and give you some very simple uh, strategies for managing yourself so you can do better in your business. You yes, know, John, you, you're down to something that, uh, that's one of my favorite saying is, how you do anything is how you do everything. If you're not conducting your life in general with efficiency and with desire and with, with focus, then that's how you're conducting your business. So to, have, to wrap what you're going to be learning in terms of this event, the tools, the strategies, the techniques, in the context of how it's affected by your mind and how it affects your mind and your emotions, would you, it just simply would not be as effective as it's going to be. And that's one of the reasons why I was so excited to work with you, John, on this event, because I know that's an important part of what you do in terms of your coaching. It's setting that context. It's creating the psychology for success. The tools themselves, great. But like you said, they won't be nearly as effective if you use them at all, unless you have the right context and the right psychology to do it. Yeah, well, it's personal development without all the woo-woo stuff. That's what I like yeah. about it. Why am I bring a little woo-woo? I'm insane. My whole, my whole, I'm like crazy Eddie. <laughs> oh my god! I just want I want results that are fun, that are honorable and respectful to to everyone. That's that's what it's about. So, get over right now. Register Fitness Fortunes Live. May 20th through 22nd, Dallas, Texas. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a life changer, and it's going to be a good time. We'll be able to sit down and talk and, and relax, and, you know, there's a party, and there's a reception, and everyone's going to be bringing their cameras and, and videotaping stuff for themselves and, and learning some really cool strategies that will apply no matter what you do. And here's the most important thing, too. It doesn't matter if you do life or personal life coaching or personal development or wellness coaching or corporate wellness coaching or kind of food nutrition uh, kind of counseling or coaching or group X or boot camp or kettlebell or CrossFit. It, it it applies to everyone, and we show you how to take these nuggets of wisdom and these specific strategies. Okay, here's what you have. Here's your perfect avatar. 
This is how you present this information to them. This is how you present it to them. This is how you do it in this group. This is how you do it in an individual, a group, in a corporate setting, online, in person, nationally, globally, locally, and all points in between. <laughs> you, may even, you may even get as far as Westminster, Colorado. Who knows? Just like the boonies, man. That's where I am. So I'm sure I'll see you there. <laughs> well, I hope they come out and uh, Kelly and I want to come out and uh, visit you guys. And uh, we I, 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 I got to get trained by Mr. America. How awesome is that? You're on, man. We'll do a little martial arts. We'll do a little bodybuilding. We'll go back and forth. Give him a, give him a bicep shot. <laughs> Can you hear my schnauzers in the background? <laughs> as soon as you said bicep shot, they said, don't do it, Daddy. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. And what year did you win Mr. America? That was, uh, oh my gosh, back in 1986. I had a chance to compete in a couple of Olympias uh, since then. And uh, my goal now is to just keep staying in relatively good shape. I That's th my arms don't even look close to that. I think you're doing all right. <laughs> all right, I will talk to you later. Thank you so much, buddy. Look forward to seeing everyone. All there. right, I'll see you in Dallas. Bye.